Hello and welcome to the third and final video in the series about the age of discovery. This one is about colonization and triangular trade. So in SOLs for C, E, and F, we will explain migration and settlement patterns, cultural diffusion, and social classes in the colonized areas by completing cause and effect graphic organizers. We will map and explain the triangular trade by creating a map of the triangular trade. We will describe the impact of the export of precious metals by answering a series of document-based questions. So here's the big picture. Europeans migrated to new colonies in the Americas and created new cultural and social patterns. But in Africa and Asia, Europeans established trading posts or small colonies, mostly of merchants. So here's a map of the European claims in the New World or the Americas. And as you can see up here, you got the French, remember where Cartier explored, and then you have English who managed to claim some stuff along the coast, but not a lot really compared to Spain. Spain claimed this huge chunk of territory and really technically had rights to this area as well. But the Portuguese controlled this area on the eastern side of this line, a treaty that Spain and Portugal signed together where they said, hey, you know that whole, I don't know, half of those two continents over here, they thought at the time, um, you can have that Spain. And then we'll, we'll, just, we'll just take this area, said Portugal. Portugal was also more interested in Africa, which would be over here, um, and over into the other half of the world. So Spain and Portugal basically decided, just sitting over in Europe, well, you take all of that, we'll take all of this. Good? Good. And then they went around their merry way, colonizing everything. Also note that the Dutch had some little areas down here, and the English had these islands. Those are important. Worth knowing. And that the Russians were no slouches either. This is a little bit later in time. So here's the short-term effects of this colonization on the Americas. You had disease destroying up to 90% of the native population of North and South America. Conflict and conquest destroyed a lot of the remaining population. As the Aztecs and Incas fell to the Spanish conquistadors, as you can see, um, depicted way too romantically here, the fall of uh, the Aztec city. The European colonies were set up once those native empires were destroyed, and those colonies enforced strict social classes to make sure that Europeans who were technically a minority stayed in power. And as the native peoples uh, died off under forced labor, African slaves were brought in to continue to function, operate the plantations and silver and gold mines. The long-term effects are that even hundreds of years later, there are these strict lines between social classes, which everyone kind of bought into uh, because your social status depended on your race in a lot of ways. Here's a painting that was used to help people know uh, what class you belong to depending on who your parents were because a parent of this race plus a parent of this race makes a child of this race and this class and we'll look at more of this in class in depth but also there's because there were these strong uh, single governors that ruled huge areas Latin America has this history of dictators ruling in the area um, African Americans we wouldn't have African Americans in the same sense in the Americas if it weren't for this time period of colonization because it's not just that Africans came to live in the Americas, but that they came to live in the Americas because they were forced to. And they were kept as a very separate social class and a very oppressed social class. The Europeans in the Americas got a lot more American. They got different from Europeans and they grew apart. And the Americas, as in the people who are already living there and the landscape gets a lot more European. In Africa though, it was different. Europeans established trading posts along the coast to exchange finished goods for slaves, gold, and raw materials, but they weren't able to actually conquer very effectively. And that's because the diseases in Africa actually killed a lot of Europeans, and Europeans didn't have really great firearm technology yet, so they could hold coastlines, but they couldn't really get that much further into Africa. Africa's, Africans held their own, um, but did trade slaves to the Europeans, who then brought them across the horrible Middle Passage into North and South America to work on plantations. In Asia, small groups of merchants colonized limited areas, like in India and China and the Indies over there. In India, you can see the British East India Company actually conquered all of this pink area they owned, basically. They weren't a country, they were just a company. Um, the light area here are Indian states like the Maratha Confederacy and uh, Hyderabad, Mysore. Um, but so these are areas where Indians are ruling Indians and the pink area is where a British company was ruling Indians. 
the trading companies ended up with an enormous amount of power, ruling you know sections of the world with millions of people, sometimes larger populations than their mother countries had. And trading companies also helped run the triangular trade. Now, the triangular trade, I'm going to follow one direction, but it kind of goes everywhere. There's a lot of back and forth, and it's way more complicated than we often learn, and we'll go over more of that in class. But here's the basic idea. Finished goods started out in Europe with raw materials that they are able to obtain from North America and other places. But So they're making stuff here. Then they bring that down to Africa. And then in Africa, they are trading for slaves and also um, raw materials that they would take back to Europe. But the slaves then travel across what's called the Middle Passage into the Caribbean islands. And in the Caribbean, some of the slaves are exchanged for sugar and some raw materials, which are then taken up to North America in what is now the United States and exchanged for some rum and other uh, raw materials and then taken up to Europe where more finished goods are created and it heads back down to Africa. And the system just runs as a giant circulating oven of economic activity and horrible, horrible slavery. Also during this time period, Spain got stupid rich. Uh, Spain mined slash stole from native empires huge amounts of gold, gold and silver, and they destroyed native empires and peoples in this process. They then shipped that gold and silver to China and Europe, and in fact, they shipped so much of it that gold and silver dropped in value because there's so much around. That's the problem of inflation, where you have more and more money, and so each individual piece of money that you have is worth less. And you can see here where the silver actually flowed from. So it starts over here in the New World. You see these arrows going boom, 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 traveling from Peru and other areas in the Spanish Americas to the main cities of the Spanish Americas, like Panama and Mexico City, Veracruz, and Acapulco. And it travels woo, these dark red lines over here to Spain. And it goes up here to the major trading centers of Europe. And then maybe even over here to St. Petersburg. So some of it was ending up there. But you'll see that most of these lines and most of the silver started traveling eastward. And it ended up in India. And from India, it went all the way over to China. And in fact, a lot of silver went directly from Acapulco across the ocean to the Philippines and into China. And really, by the end of this, the Chinese were just stockpiling silver and hardly wanted to trade anything with the Europeans and were in a very good trading position and a very good bargaining position because they had huge amounts of silver, so Europeans were having to spend more and more silver for the same amount of uh, silk and other trade goods that they really wanted from China. And that sets up the next set of colonial conflicts a couple centuries later.